butt cheek. Brilliant. All right. So we're live. Hello and welcome everybody. Hello, hello. To another Wednesday night paint and chat. I have been fortunate enough to have my friend Flo over for some company and to uh, utilize her amazing skills. So you um, don't have to use your own. So I don't have to use my own skills <laughs> that I've had to develop like a schlub over the last year. No, it's actually been really good. So, but I also, you know, you're still better than me at this, and so it's always fun to watch her paint. So I kind of have the camera focused on her, but additionally, folks, this beauty arrived in the mail. Can Not so, oh God, there you go, oh, Jesus. Can <laughs> you see any of it? Yeah, yeah, totally, got this, right there. There, sort of. This arrived in the mail um, this week. Maybe this, I, I can't actually remember. But yeah. Bless you. <coughs> oh, Bless my goodness. You. Excuse me. So we're going to do an unboxing of this beauty because I'm so excited. And I went ahead and printed out the card sheet for it, too, because my birthday present to myself was a color printer. These are things grown-ups buy. All right. Let's say hi to everyone in the chat. Uh, welcome, War Budgies. Always good to see you. Uh, Thomas oh, yeah. Grable, welcome. Patty's Parlor Games. Hey, Patty. Uh, Todd, welcome to the chat. What are you guys all working on tonight? I know it's been a lot of infantry of late. Hmm. <laughs> Bills, looks like the dynamic du duo tonight. Or dynamic du 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 duo. Duo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, let's see. More about you. Austin, hello. She, he, Austin says hello, Flo. Hello, hello. And I apologize if there's a little bit of annoying sound. I'm getting a new cable ordered, and I hope that's the only thing that the, the Yeti mic needs, because I really don't want to have to replace the whole thing. Um, I mean, it's been good for the last few years, but it should last longer than this. So I'm here's hoping that the cable replacement will make that annoying buzz in there go away. <laughs> wow, it's a flow. That's more budgies. <laughs> also an Instagram. <laughs> oh my goodness. What's up? Mr. Warbird, I need to send you some videos uh, because I know you're a bird guy and I've fallen in love with Griffey, the dancing cockatoo, on YouTube. You may already know. You may already know, but if you don't, I'm going to send you some videos of that later. Greystone Hobbies, hello. Mac Attack, good to see you. I'm wondering what sort of bases you use. Slotted, rounded lip? Well, most of the privateer stuff is all slotted base. If it's not, then it has a bit of a rounded a rounded edge lip. Uh, do I have an immediate miniature? Well, here, can we see the miniature on you there? <clears throat> so that is just straight on a base. I don't think it would, let's look at the underside. Okay. Yeah, I guess there is a slot actually for that one. Because there's slots and there's pegs, right? And just depending on what the model setup is, whatever gets your model securely to the base is the base I prefer. Um, although the, um, Cool mini or not, their deep well bases were pretty cool. You could do some really fun diorama stuff with that. I think all of the blind water congregation belongs in those kinds of bases because there are so many that are aquatic. Let's see, Engineer 2G. <clears throat> Monster Apocalypse wasp bee thing. Oh, yes. Uh, Crim7, hello and welcome. Let's see. Looking for a quick bed, a wonderful student. Thank you, engineer. I'm brand new to War Machine and was recommended to your channel by an old friend. Do you think you'll ever make a how to play video for War Machine? You know, I tried, there's actually kind of a tragic story uh, several years back when I tried to make a how to play of Malifaux. And I realized how cut up in roles you can get. It would be a lot easier with something like War Machine. Um, but it's. I don't know that the early videos I have on there of just battle reports don't already serve that function because a lot of times you can go to a game store and someone will be like, well, you do this and this, and and then you can watch how a game plays out because you have some semblance of the rules to see it all played out. 
And a lot of times the battle reports are laid out in such a way that everything's being explained as you go. So a how to play would just be, I mean, I'd have to break it down into sections of how to read your card, um, you know, what what the difference between a spell and an animus is, or um, abilities and star actions. Like you have to really get into the nitty gritty and breaking all of that down. And I don't know that I wouldn't get lost in the weeds doing that. Um, so I don't know if I'm organized enough to make something like that. Although it would be cool. <clears throat> Hi, Shale. Wall of Aboros for my circle army. Nice, Thomas. Appreciate it. Hey, Brian. Hum. Returns from the Halls of Oblivion. Hey, J. Alex. Good to see you, man. Patty, I finally got mutants to a playable state. Oh, that's exciting. That's always like a big, big accomplishment. I'm so excited for that. But I'll leave for AT tomorrow and won't be able to do much with it till I get back. You know, that's actually fine because then you get a little bit of a chance for it to settle. And you come back to it. You come back a little fresher. And things that you may have been used to might stand out for correction. It's totally a thing with writing. I know it has, J. Alex. I do know and will always accept burb videos. <laughs> okay, I guess where Budgies knows who Griffy is. That's fine. What are you doing, Brian? Let's see. I am painting a Drell AP Marksman Rifle for Infinity. Nice. Holy Nightmare Fuel. What is that? What is that? He's one here. Why, that is... My beautiful new friend, the Rattler. What? Wrong way. <laughs> Wrong way. Isn't he beautiful? Look at that face. It's just so cute. Your oh. pants keep going into focus. <laughs> I'm sorry! Oh, yes. So, Flo is really good at painting, like, desiccated flesh. Um, the Skin and Moans comes to mind as one of my favorite figures by her, in addition to something like the Witchwood. But Skin and Moans has all these layers of, you know redder to purple or more whatever whatever all the colors you use are I'm really great it's at explaining a this <clears throat> a little bit pink and a little bit of pink because that's an organic color bills i am working on two project units for star wars legion and scratch building a bar an arm a building for my 15 millimeter sci-fi stuff it's all about that base Good to see you riding sidecar fly away. She's in charge of this this painting business tonight. And last time. <clears throat> How to play War Machine in five minutes coming up in like a year. Yeah, War Budgies has some amazing videos. But they're, they're like really great tidbits for life. Still impressed at your Warcaster like rundown. <clears throat> Michael, I learned how to play War Machine by watching your vids, so no need on a how to play in my opinion. See, there you go. Fair enough, I really like your videos for some stuff that happens. For some stuff that happens that don't always... Yeah, like where it's hard to tell why something happened because an interaction might go so quickly even though it's a bit complex. Yes. And that's fair. So, I don't know. Maybe I'll just make videos at all again on the War Machine land. You'd play War Machine with me, right? Uh, sure. I'm not really picky with my games, though. In general, I play more board games. Brian, you are hot. Let's see, working on a dice goblin that I printed from Twin Goddess Minis. A dice goblin. What does that look like? Alright, let's see here. What do you think, uh, Todd asks, what do you think about using blue and green for trollkin and gabber skin on the skin and moans? Ooh. Well, are you implying that they were gobbers and trollkin in life that have been uh, repurposed and into a skin and moans? I guess you could. I mean, I the mean, colors work together. So. Mm. All right. I like to play with colors, so that totally works for me. <laughs> <laughs> Those are good colors. Like, warmer and cold, cooler, I guess. They both work. Because if you did, you'd still have probably purples in there, I would think. I don't know. I don't know exactly how that would work. Evening, Andrew. Uh, I, yeah, but I got the Privateer Mystery Box. I'm getting my first War Machine Army hopefully soon. Oh, and it's a mystery as to which one. Do you have any thoughts on this? Do you prefer, like, getting hordes 
or specifically War Machine? Like, do you have, do they dif differentiate it that way? I thought it was just true mystery box. You got whatever they sent you. The Alfonso, you flatter. <laughs> so I really hope you make more battle reports for any game because you're the best. Well, I am the best, so I probably do. <laughs> Funny enough, my ego is usually not starving. <laughs> well, with it, you were standing next to me, and Kayla goes, You're so pretty! Oh, I know. That was lovely. <laughs> I love when girls compliment me. It's so rare. <laughs> nope, there's a cat. Ugh. Hi, Mason. Hi, Mason. <laughs> Just came in to yell at us. I mean, I assume Skin and Moons isn't too picky about whose skin he's picking up, but I thought, like, the Grimkin are picking up their essence and such as well. So, we'd have to see. Uh, Jalex, my projects have been decidedly unhobbyist related of late. Except for my friends who made a card game, not a war game, a short session roguelite dungeon crawler. Excited for them, they got funded in one day. Ooh, that's super awesome. Now, card games are one of the easier ones to pick up, right? I mean, they're generally easy to produce, and if you have an elegant rule set, then you can go really far with it. I think Exploding Kittens made six million on Kickstarter, so. I mean, but that's, that's the oatmeal. It is, and it has a really strong art direction and all of that, but I think card games generally have a very wide audience because there isn't the intimidation level that hearing something like a miniature game has, or especially hearing something like a war game has. Where Cable hog. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> you don't look to my house for inspiration on, like, oh, we should get into hobbies. You're just like, oh, my gosh, are you okay? Um, so, you know, we're card games, very compact, you know. You're you're not generally making too big a dollar investment. You don't have to do yeah, anything as long as it's not magic. Well, yeah, Magic the Gathering. Even that one, I don't think it's ex as expensive as, as getting into Warhammer or even War Machine. To start out with. Maybe. It depends on how competitive you want to be. <laughs> I want to say, uh... <clears throat> I picked up the mystery box, too. I have a small addiction to those. Tempted to get eight mystery boxes, but that's $480. Gosh, that is a really good deal, though, because those are full starter boxes for 60 bucks a piece. So, I don't know, man. I mean, if you can afford to do it and you want to, then whatever. Just don't go not paying your rent because you're buying miniatures. <laughs> that would be foolish. <laughs> Can't see anyone doing that. No. I would, there are definitely lines I would not cross. Samuel. Hi, folks. Hey, Samuel. Hope everyone's doing great. Hi, Flo. Hello, hello. Uh, so it's their spring sale thing. It's either War Machine or Horde's Army, and they guarantee that 90% of the box will be one faction. Okay, so you probably get some mercs in there or something. Hi, Adept is ridiculous. Your battle report your battle report videos have spoiled me. Most others have static camera from a bit too far away. Well that's kind of the thing, right? Like with specifically War Machine, I don't see it with 40k at all. Is they went into the two different styles. There was the cinematic one, which is like my videos. And then there was the competitive play ones where you look like you're watching a chess tournament from a bench. And on the one hand, I understand why that's competitive, because somebody just sets up the camera, and you don't have to worry about the camera being a distraction to the players, because if you're shooting cinematically, it changes your ability to play the game just outright. Like, you, you think you have a move planned out, and once the camera's getting in there, because it's slower, you play in much more slow motion. Generally, it's a different way you have to strategize as you go, and you think having more time would help you out, but eh, it could be counterproductive sometimes. Um, but yeah, it's also like boring a sin to watch. Let's see, I'm really hoping for Mena or any War Machine faction, really. And there's a couple Hordes armies I really like, <gasps> like the Grimkin. Uh, Circular Boros is amazing. Uh, Legion. Would be really cool, but I would always, I think I would modify all of the war beasts to have like straight human teeth because I think that would make them far scarier. <laughs> and what else? 
Oh yeah, Scorn. Scorn of... I don't know, I guess I've, I've not been as in love with Yale Scorn. Um, let's see, bought two of the mystery boxes in the most recent of an uncontrolled spiral into privateer games. Wow, yeah, you've really gotten into it. That's super exciting. I'm just going to take credit for that you got into it, by the way. Let's see, just last... Just in case you were wondering. <laughs> last mystery box I ordered two and got two mana. Ah, uh, that's just the luck of the draw, I guess. Uh, Austin, I traded Magic the Gathering for War Machine and I've been saving a lot of money. Okay, fair enough. Hey, Mikey V. We should all be blessed. Menoth will, Menoth wills it. You know, you don't have to spend a lot of money on privateer press models. The individual models are, you know, it's just the nature of these games. Like, they're just going to be pricey. Depending on if you do, like, secondary market, though, you could definitely build up a massive army on the cheap. But then there's going to be, like, expensive special models. Although segue. Uh, this black anchor heavy industries model, the slaughterhouse piece is only a hundred dollars, which I'm pretty sure is significantly less than a similar, similarly sized model, um, in, in the 40 K land would be. So I'm, I'm going to scoot your rattler out of the way here and take an inner. I'm going to come back and look at your comments here, but I did want to share with you because I am excited to share with you. And I said I would. Um, my my little slaughterhouse that I got the other day. Little. My little adorable slaughterhouse. Bum, ba, da, bum. It's Box. a slaughtery goodness. Uh, right? Yeah, okay. Well, giant face. That's what we see so far. Right. So, as usual, all gargantuan models, as well as all battle engines, take place on a 120 millimeter base. I'm going to just fix this so it's not as nauseating. Come back to you, Flo. Promise. Sure. Promise. Promise. So yes, 120 millimeter base with all these fun little bits on there. Uh, obviously not slotted, but that is the standard size for all gargantuans, all battle engines. And that's that. Now we've got our individual pieces, and I haven't even actually opened these before so I hope they're all here <laughs> I assume they're all here and uh, always remember to clean your resin fellas and folks uh, we've got our big heavy chonker pieces right here Ta -da! I have no idea how this is gonna go together this is gonna be great to just do That's live the door. everybody <gasps> yes okay so I don't know if any of you ever played American American McGee's Alice yes that is what it looks like. Yes. Totally does. So now you know how to paint it. I know. That, that's what I was going to say. I'm like, uh, yeah, I hope you know. You just chose your color scheme. Oh, I'll, I'm all in. Like, cool, awesome portal. And yes, we know that the gremlin swarms live in there. But beautiful, like, wood patterning. Um, and this is all one solid, heavy resin piece. And you can tell them this is the part that's going to attach. I love somewhere else. And, uh, oh, there's a little friend there. Oh my god, these are great. So yes, first thought, like, American McGee's, like, crazy portal. See, when down I the first hole. saw it, I was kind of thinking of uh, Monster House, the animated movie. Oh, I haven't seen it. So it kind of looks like that, but that door is definitely American McGee's. Yeah. I'm sure you guys in the chat agree. You all know what's up. <gasps> it's okay. <laughs> Can't spell slaughterhouse without laughter. <laughs> Thanks, Shell. <laughs> I agree. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> that looks smaller than 100 millimeters. You have really big hands. One, yes, I do. But it's 120 millimeters. Thank you very much. I mean, I could always use my hands, so it'll make it look a lot bigger. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> the next piece we have here is the roof. Shocker, I know. Made of these lovely wooden shingles, which you can't even get insured anymore these days. I mean, they really didn't think this through, but um, awesome little um, chimney, of course. It's all a Tim Burton twisted, um, like the twisted houses in the remake of Charlie and Chocolate Factory, and the house that Charlie lives in. And then back here, you've got, got 
and got, a little dude. <laughs> got naked dude, because all the gremlins run around naked in their naked. So Flo gets to paint some goblin butt. I mean, I did already. That's true. Death nail. Yes, the death nail is, is lovely. All right, and then here's all of the rest of these bases. So those are the first two. Kathunk. All right, what do we got here? All right, so this looks like it is the side of it. So these are going to be some pegs um, off these. Not the sprue, but, you know, when a resin cast, it's just the mold. And so here are the exit holes, essentially, from, from the resin being pushed through it and this is where it comes out for air so everything else can keep keep its proper shape i'm explaining everything so well but uh so awesome side of the house not sure if that would attach more i have to see i don't know if i have enough of the house is it on the back side yes Aha. it's the back it is the back of the house folks this tree coming into it and whatever's going on here i think that it's like a little extra closet or something. I don't know. It's not. It's not a window. <laughs> All right. Um, a very healthy fire within your fireplace. And in fact, if your actual fireplace starts looking like that at the top, you should probably leave. But this is certainly should cool. Probably run. <laughs> <laughs> I flee directly. Oh goodness, all these flat pieces. Okay, well this is like the front yard, I think, because we've got a little got graveyard. Yep. With all the hands. hands coming out of it, I don't know if that can be seen very well. Uh, yeah, I don't know, let me see if it refocuses. Ta-da! I'm like, here, let me cover my pants for you. I know, it's really oh, focused on your pants. So that part looks awesome. <laughs> American McGee's ass, there you go, Jay Alex knows what's up. Exit, air gate, Thank you. That's a word for it. So, little um, graveyard out in the front. The rest of the graveyard. I don't think these were dug to any sort of code. Um, you know, a little, little bit jammed up there. So, Flo is going to have a lot of fun because look at what this, this offers. A perfect opportunity to draw something in there. In fact, all of these you could write on, or maybe if you could make a decal. I don't know. Why would I make a decal when I can freehand? She can, she can freehand. <laughs> it's just so much more work. A uh, massive tree, because you know, no, no good tree. house. I mean, every good house needs proper landscaping, obviously. And you can't this have a creepy house without the creepy tree. Are those exit gates? Yeah, they probably are. Looks like it. So up here, you would clip. Here you would clip, and, uh, and down there you would clip. But look, another gremlin. naked little gremlin. Naked gremlin. They're everywhere. I know, they're so cute. Good thing I like them. Uh, the clawy hand of a tree, because sometimes that's just really important. <laughs> Careful with resin, by the way. It can be more brittle. You don't actually want to drop that stuff. As you drop it. As I drop it. Hey, I dropped it like two inches. For once. Anyway, so moving on, I believe this is part of a chimney. Am I thinking of it the right way? Is it that way? What's it that way? What do we got here? Flo, put this together for me. Okay, oh my gosh, there's okay. some metal bits. Give me stuff. Okay. And then we've got a little gable, a little extra piece of the house for the front, uh, loaded with yet more goblins or gremlins because they are everywhere. Uh, a little bit of home repair there. You can save a lot of money doing your own repairs on your home, so. You know, that's that's a good way to take it. Um, and sometimes you just want some privacy windows, and so they kind of opted for that, too. Oh, my God, your pants. I'm sorry, I can't do both. <laughs> You're not allowed to have textured pants anymore. They're not textured, they just have a pattern on them. Pattern pants, whatever. The camera can't tell. All right, and then, and then, and then, and then some overhang here, so more roof pieces. And then we've got a couple of metal bits for, looks like a fence post for the sign, I think. And uh, more tree, clawing, clawing trees. So how many bits is that? Two, four, six, eight, 
13. 13 pieces to this bit. Now, full disclosure, I privateer did just send this to me, so thank you guys. Appreciate you doing that, because I was probably going to buy it anyway. <laughs> and I might just go in again, because this is a really cool looking model. So, I'm super excited about it. All right, now I can catch up on the chat. So I wanted to let you know that I wasn't a liar and there is actually an unboxing in here. And I'm super excited because Daryl Flo is going to be the one painting it and she already has the inspiration needed for all of the color scheme and all of the things. Yeah, all the things. All the things. Uh, Patty, the upfront cost for most war games is high. But Magic the Gathering's constant card cycling makes it almost more expensive over time. I guess it would depend on whether or not you're keeping it up, right? Because you can just I mean, still play with friends and not... Yeah, but most people who play, play competitively also. Yeah. Whew. <clears throat> the problem with Magic is most recent cards lose value as soon as they're out of standard. Mm, mm, mm. Cinematic is fun to watch. I agree. If I ever pick up a Horde's Force, I would pick up Grimkin. Yeah, they are the best. Grimkin, Circle, or Legion are my top three Hordes. How many points is $200 worth of Worm, worm Hordes armies, roughly? Well, if you got one of those mystery boxes, 60 bucks gets you a ton of models right there. You should be able to fill out uh, what are the points lists now? 75 points, I believe, is the current standard. <clears throat> $200 should get you a solid, pretty solid 75-point list, I would think. They'd be happy-looking evil dragons. I know, if they had, like, the teeth. Because they're kind of the anime faction legion, if we're being honest, right? I That's how I perceive it, anyway. And so, I feel like I just add an extra bit of creepiness by giving them flat teeth. As a Legion player, that's the best idea I've heard. Thank you, Tim. I don't like your battle reports. I just don't play Warm Hordes anymore. I understand, Russell. Out of curiosity, what was it that did it for you? Like, just kind of lack of time? Or people kind of petered out and it dissipated? Or you just had some bad experiences? Samuel, so I saw recently that Tyranid armies are practically the most expensive army to build in Warhammer 40k. Lucky me. Yeah. Um, Paul is a, lead, is a uh, Tyranid player, and it does seem like you, you spend some good money. Although, Space Marines have got to be getting up there. Those, those custodies and intercessors and stuff are pricey little buggers. Let's see. Adeptus Ridiculous says, hello, Flo. Hello. I'll give you 60% credit for my new addiction. My persistent mercenaries brother is the other 40. That's fair. That's totally fair. Interesting, this box is made of... Yes, I know. I know. It's a big box. And then I had to zoom out. And I don't know. I probably need to reposition because right now it's just awkwardly on flows like things. Hey, everybody. Check out my crotch. It's not that kind of stream, flow. I'm sure you'd get a lot more viewers. Mm. <laughs> Mm -mm. <laughs> All right, so there we go. Show off your rattler. Let's get let's get the progress check, guys. We're at eight o'clock. I didn't paint anything while I was while show you off this. that handsome devil. Hello. Yep. Yes. <laughs> I have to put an apron on you. <laughs> I mean, I wear aprons. Fine. You so, we've got him looking super cool. I love, love, love the way the face comes off. There is a, a bad guy, a main boss. This is, this is me mm -hmm. dating myself. An old main boss in um, Ocarina of Time in the Shadow Temple. Shadow Temple? Yes. Yeah, I think so. It's the bad guy at the very end, and it has that creepy skull face that you've got to, like, kill. And it always spooked me to death. Didn't handle horror very well. That's doesn't always been handle been, horror very doesn't well. Doesn't handle, no. I watched Sleepaway Camp recently. <laughs> that was something. Uh, yeah, the amount of time wasted is definitely terrifying. 
If it wasn't for the few massive purchases I'm making for AOS, I'd go all in on mystery boxes. Nice. Andrew, that looks smaller than 100. Yes, yes. Hence the big hands comment. Thanks. Uh, I had a mini eaten by that portal a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> Monster house indeed. I printed a Cheshire cat from American McGee's Alice for a friend who is a bit of a crazy cat lady. I really should paint it and bring it over to her. Yeah, you should. So Just be like, out of my uh, respect. For perspective, there's the base against my hand. Uh, back it up. Nope. Yep. Barely. Not even. Oh, let's just let's just get that. Some. See, yeah, there you go. <laughs> proper, there you go. proper girl hand, not Lana hands. Let's see. The Can't word for resin working. holes are spruce. Ah, I don't think it's quite spruce. Cause the reason I would argue that's not a sprue, and this is just me coming up with it's an argument on it. Well, right, like a sprue is kind of a okay, specific right. design in order to maximize efficiency with the pieces fitting in there. Like in gates and exit gates probably make a little bit more sense because when you are building a resin miniature and you have that mold, I mean, there's not a lot graceful about it. You're just carving where you need to go and, and maybe it's the same thing. I just think of a sprue as a more refined piece. IKRPG, called shot to the goblin's bear. Nice. Good evening, ladies. Hi, Kahneman Studios. I know this, I know this know. comment is kind of old, but I appreciate it. Very eloquent explanation of how resin pores work. Thank you. <laughs> oh, it's like an actual house. Those resin plugs are artifacts from the process that brought you such an amazing piece. Yes, indeed. We're almost caught up, I think, maybe, sort of. I can't wait for you to put this all together. So, yeah, it'll get put together here and then primed. And then it goes to, to live with flow for a little while. And then when it comes back, it's ready to murder things and eat, eat other creatures. OSHA will have a problem with this place. Every, uh, every code <laughs> for any sort of building ever might take some issue with this. Because flow is a boss. Yeah, you are. I try. I try. Every Tim Burton set needs a gnarled tree. Uh, I did rewatch Sleeping um, Sleepy Hollow not that long ago. It is so great. I love that tree. I love that tree, and I love, love, love that <coughs> windmill. <laughs> so much Grimkin porn. Yes, I know. A lot of a lot of naked Grimkin. There's you know some questionable things there, but you know it's, it's I mean, fine. They're not exactly moral creatures anyways so i pity whatever hoa rep has to cite this house pro tip raise the value of your house by training it to walk into nicer neighborhoods <laughs> <laughs> oh i love having you in this chat <laughs> i'm consuming your enemies along the way i know okay now i have to buy it you're such a pusher i know that's how that works they send me stuff and then i'm all excited <laughs> and then I guess that works out into the internet somewhere. So, yay! But, I mean, it's in great condition. I remember when, um, like, The Conquest came out originally, like, some of their older, older resin pieces. This has definitely come a long way, because not all resins are created equal at all. <laughs> and so this has come a lot better. We, oh, Alfonso, he's, he's going to give me the knowledge. Uh, we in the industry call those feeds and vents you do drop your resin models and it dents, you can use a heat gun and the resin memory will spring it back into shape. What? Let's test that right now. Uh, that's not. But he said it'll pop right back up. What if I get it on a corner? I don't know. I am. Um, I am the type who have had to have their models JB welded before in order to prevent destruction. In order to manage me. And I'm a lot more delicate with my miniatures now, but, you know, you'd go to a, a convention or a tournament or something, and you meet somebody and you're like, oh, those models look super great, and they're like, yeah, you could hold them. I'm like, I'm just going to sit on my hands. Like, I don't, I don't even want to risk that. I, I just don't know what I'd do if I broke your model. Oh, so, yeah, again, I've gotten a lot better about that, but 
just that just dropped too much stuff. Let's see, J. Alex. I don't think my friend's Kickstarter game, the Keep Key K E E Y P, is a real expensive investment for consumers right now. They're mostly stressing the shipping costs, especially overseas. Yeah, yeah, overseas is uh, super unfun to ship to right now. I learned that with my uh, my pin when I did that. <clears throat> This terrain or an actual creature of some kind? Well, both. <laughs> yes. The answer the is answer yes. Is yes. Uh, oh my god, cat. She's gone deaf, by the way. So now she meows really loud. Like. Like the way people who have recently gone deaf might do. So, I don't think she knows. Let's see, on the dev side, they're trying to get a strong enough push that a major mu publisher picks them up, so on distribution they can lower shipping costs. Yeah, I mean, for the most part, especially people buying on Kickstarter, they, they understand shipping is what it is, and it just, that's it. Alfonso says, looking good, Flo. Thank you, thank you. Progress, yes, progress. Oh, gosh, I'm sorry, that was a really loud clap. Shell, progress, base colors on the gabo. Deciding what color to paint the shiny math rocks. He's ogling. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Well, his favorite color, obviously, is ogling. Bango Bango is the Shadow Temple. Do you mean the puppet from Gan? No, I think it was Bango. Mm. No, maybe it was a mini boss. <clears throat> Actually, it might have been a mini boss in the well. I wonder if it was a well where you get the, um, the lens of truth. Because... It was just super eerie. It had this really long, distended neck. And it would lean way down to, like, come and attack you. And then it would come and put its head way back up. <gasps> I think it looks more like the pale hand. I, yeah, Austin, I think. No, yeah, there we go. I think Austin is right on with it. I didn't know that was its name. Let's see. Monster hands. There you go, Brian. I bought a mystery box and I'm looking forward to it. Man, everyone's in on this this um, mystery box. Yeah. Hint, hint, Miranda. Ah. Do I really need more? I've got, I've got a lot of minis that have been gifted to me over time, or that I've like purchased on the secondary market, like from game stores where people were kind of getting rid of rid of an army. So I've got quite a bit of Menoth, I've got a Legion Army, I've got Trollkins, I've got, those are the major ones, I bought a Gator Man Army, I've got Mercs, of course, and and then on top of that, Signar, Kador, Grimkin, <laughs> so. And how many of those are painted? You know, quite a lot of them, because the thing about getting stuff on the secondary market is a lot of stuff's like kind yeah, of painted. Well, painted. well, okay, we don't have to <laughs> worry about that part. You're so picky. Damn straight. Brian, the end of Sleepaway Camp is brilliant. It was very weird. For an hour and 24 minute movie. I think it was an hour and 24. It felt so long for that one moment. And I and I, I watched like some of the making of stuff after the fact. And it seemed like the set was pretty cool. The crew and everything and the kids all had a good time. And it was like a good experience. And I guess for the time, because it was 83, I think is when it came out, it had this really big impact, but I don't know. It, it does not stand up to time. No. I, I didn't think so. And I know a lot of people, my dear friend Joel is going to hate me because they're going to be like, I saw Sleepaway Camp and I, I hated it. <laughs> but it's... To be fair, I am the horror buff and I was not a big fan either. Yeah. So, I don't know. It, it it was an interesting movie in retrospect, but I can't really make somebody watch that movie. So. I have a budgie. I love him. He's an idiot. What are you talking about, Brian? Let's see. Miranda, have game stores in your area start opening up again? Yes. Some they of them, They have yeah. been open. It's just they haven't been open for much business. There hasn't been a lot of business. Um, Only three people at a time in it. And oh, really? Okay. That's so how they've been for a while. Mm. But. And then um, Active Imagination actually permanently closed down their entire gaming side. 
because they couldn't keep up the rent with it anymore, so that got downsized. Um, maybe we'll see. Uh, Brian says Etten Games is now open on appointment. I thought you could go in, though. Yeah, you can go in. They might have appointments for, like, D&D &D and stuff, though. Oh, I see. For long term. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, Bills, looking at trying out Kill Team, it may give my Eldar figures a reason to come out of their hidey hole. Yeah. <laughs> Flow, voice of reason. Whatever. We take turns. What was it, Becky? Uh, my go. name's Flo, and I use logic. What charming things to say about your friends. Oh my goodness. What? I'm just coming in to see what your action is. I can't give it to me. You can't respond to hostile creatures. Anyway. <clears throat> so, yes, Kill Team. I enjoyed Kill Team. Certainly haven't played it in a long time, but boy, I miss it. Although, I got worried about all the rules bloat when elites came out, was it elites, commanders, then there was another one, and it became like 40k light, so at that point I'm like, eh, maybe I'll just play 40k again. Let's see here, JLX, FYI, I might go poof suddenly without goodbye in 30 minutes, no worries, I'm expecting a phone call. Want to hop on? Show love. Totally missed everyone during my fellowship. Well, it's good to have you back, Jay Alex. You do what you gotta do. Yeah, me too. Sleepy Hollow is my favorite go-to inspiration. Sleepy Hollow, and I've been doing a lot of stuff on, like, looking at costuming and stuff. And Sleepy Hollow is definitely up there. Dracula is kind of a fascinating one. Bram Stoker's Dracula. Picking up someone's models from the table, Miranda, naughty. No, never, never touch anybody's models without asking. When I look at them, what I was talking about is if I'm if compl complimenting them and they're like, oh yeah, you could pick it up. And it's like, no. Now, admittedly, in the War Machine player groups, if they've like barely dined to take the model out of the box, I feel less bad about this. But that's, that is a different conversation of which I have made my opinions clear, I think. <laughs> Let's see. So true. Not all resins are made equal. Nope. Did anyone catch Rain in Hell? Adam Loper and Vince Ventrella's new model agnostic skirmish game. Saw the day it launched. It was, what, 10 bucks, I think, for the PDF and 15 for print-on-demand, which is pretty good. So I imagine that he will do quite well, or they will do quite well for it. But I haven't looked at the rule set. Is that a Kador war cat? No. That cat is a merc through and through. She doesn't even know what loyalty is. J. Alex. Yes. Oh, I have so many people around me who haven't seen. Have you seen Spinal Tap? No. I have to fix these things. Anyway, speaking of which, did you see the new Batmobile from Raging Heroes in your Facebook post? That was hell. I haven't. I haven't been on my Facebook in a while. I'll take a look at it. I also am terrible at navigating my Facebook because they keep updating the app and moving stuff around and making me feel like a, an old, decrepit person. So I uh, rebel by not engaging. <laughs> now nah, your cat's looking for attention. My cat did the same thing. Needs loves. She has plenty of loves. And the second you pick her up or start cuddling with her, she'll give you like all the purrs for a little bit and then just wander off. So I have to pet it on my terms. There's always a little bit of that battle of wills. I'm not gonna, I can't cuckoo any animal. And uh, she, she knows better. I know when she, she's different meows for it too. Let's see. The mystery box is just a mystery. God, so many people on the mystery boxes. A friend of mine was playing with playing with one of my Tyranid gargoyles and wondered if it could fly. Didn't end well after he launched it. I don't imagine your friends anymore. Well, I mean, it depends. I imagine, I mean, minis have to be able to survive a certain amount of handling. You are still using them on a table. You're still packing you and traveling with them. You don't launch them across the room, though. I mean... Generally, that's probably true. 
But again, and I've commented on this before, like Age of Sigmar models, so beautiful. The Alliance of the Dead are so beautiful. Like the Shade Spiral, the Deadite ones, the ghosts, or not the Deadites, but the ghostly ones. Deadites are super awesome too. They're just too delicate. Like they make me nervous to look at them. <laughs> like any Malifaux model. That sleepaway camp face, though. I know, but you wait an hour and 23 minutes to see this, that scene. And you just, I don't think, I don't think that makes up for that. And, but it is a cool scene, and it is impressive how they did it, and disturbing. I mean, it's certainly disturbing. Don't, don't go send your kitties out to watch that. Most raging heroes are fiddly to put together, almost as bad as GW Malagant Mordo. Mortis engines. I had one particularly fiddly Raging Heroes model and it was a penitent engine uh, equivalent. Definitely cool. Very beautiful. And the pieces do fit just right, but kind of figuring that out and making sure that you don't over um, clean a piece is, is actually tricky. <clears throat> Saron Saron, person renting a room in my house is annoying the heck out of me by listening to these stupid erotic novel audiobooks <laughs> with incredibly cheesy plots. Ha! I just put, oh my gosh, <laughs> I don't even know what to say. They have wireless headphones, but when we use them, I'm so sorry. I feel like there might be a battle of audiobooks. Uh, you could you could play back with. There's a bunch of like super macho black library books you could probably play in response to that. I mean, fight absurdity with absurdity. Wow, I can't believe it's taking so long to open. Here in Canada, everything's now open. All of Canada? I'm honestly surprised about that. Flo, back me up. Hellraiser was the OG business. It's the first time I watched Hellraiser. I think I was about four years old. And that was my introduction to horror, and Pinhead was my favorite thing in the world. Really? <laughs> yes. And uh, my family is very, very big on horror and Halloween, so... Did you ever get to dress as Pinhead? No. Oh, okay. Would you know how to do so now? We can make it work. I don't know that I would work as Pinhead. You need yeah. someone taller and thinner. Yeah, probably like just a different shape. But there were a bunch of like. You just bring what Donald are they called? Back the and we'll put a bald cap on him. <laughs> the Cinnabites, right? That was what they were called. The Cinnabites. Yeah, I think Cinnabites is what they were called. I'm sorry, but I just think Cinnabon. Yeah, I know you think Cinnabon. I get it. I get it. It's fine. <laughs> Alright, I'm waiting for something to load. Thomas, Miranda, did you see my Warp Wolf stalker I posted for May? I think I did, but I'm actually ugh, getting yelled at by Facebook. Do this thing. Do this thing. Did you know you can do this thing? It's like, doesn't let me see anything. Did you know that I don't give a... It's super annoying. Let's see, so there's the comments. Uh, how do I go to face schmark and show me the things? Okay, so I saw the cool battle tech minis. And then all the heavy metal stuff from from uh, Adeptus Ridiculous. Oh, I think I did see that Whirlpool Stalker. Where are you? Quiet. <laughs> she actually did it quietly. Alright, and then I saw the super awesome uh, colored uh, kobold rangers by Todd, which is just, mwah, love them. <laughs> Where is it? I know I saw a stalker. Pretty sure I did. Kitty is wondering if you've ever seen The Nevers. I have not. Um, I saw a reaction video to the costuming of The Nevers because apparently there's a lot of really impressive uh, choreography in um, 
like period piece dramas, so. But beyond that, I haven't. Um, although, I, you might ask Kitty if she's ever watched Christine McConnell, because I feel like there's a certain similar fabulousness that they, that she might like about her. I don't know. I'm not sure. <gasps> Where are you? Sorry, I really, like, I'm stubborn about this because I know I saw it. Let's see, they're middle-aged cat ladies. Not what I'm looking for, and no. But <laughs> okay. Let's see, Spinal Tap viewing party. I'll be down with that. We have so many. We do have a lot of viewing parties planned, actually. One of our cats loves when I pet him, and just when you think he's enjoying it, bam, he bites, then runs. Yeah, my cat knows better than bite me, but she'll be a bit of a brat sometimes. Did Miranda my cats just are all sweet. Oh, yeah, Army of Darkness is awesome. In fact, I have always had, like, a love of that kind of ridiculous skeletal thing, because even as a kid, for whatever reason, I ended up watching Jason and the Argonauts a lot, which is a really impressive movie still. Night Haunt, Lady Oleander is held up by a thin piece of plastic. Yeah, all of that terrifying. Fifty Shades of Mob. <laughs> Coleman Three had to pin a few pieces just to make it usable. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Christian. Cinnabites. Yeah. Okay, good. I had it. That's amazing. I thought listening to Curse of the Shallon on repeat, which I do, was annoying. Let's see, Todd literally watched Heavy Metal and Blast, it's awkward, oh gosh. Are we just trying to encourage Todd to like have a, f or Saren to have a fight with his roommate? Oh my, oh, counter the, with the audiobook of Gilbert Gottfried reading Fifty Shades. I think I heard like two minutes of that. Was, yeah, that's, it's a form of torture. I mean, Fifty Shades. It's just ridiculous and silly. And I worked in a bookstore whenever those books came out. Uh, and it was like no. a... Well, yeah, that's right. <laughs> we both did. Like a fan fiction of Twilight, right? That is exactly what it started as. Which was a fan fiction of Buffy. Was it? Yeah. God, I can't I feel like that. Stephanie Myers missed all the values of Buffy. But whatever, she had a weird thing and was popular and whatever to each their own, then yeah, Fifty Shades came out as fan fiction then got picked up. <sighs> so many awkward boys coming into the store and just, oh, I need to buy this for my lady. And so, of course, we're all like, oh, she needs that, huh? <laughs> just horrible treatment of a customer. <clears throat> we would never do that. You get time. Could give mutants a once-over. Link is on. Maybe. We'll have to talk about that, Patty. It's man. <laughs> Time has not been my friend. Brian, I liked the Never. Or I liked Never. Is it just Nevers? I thought it was the Nevers. I've been watching, uh, what have I been watching? I'm still getting through The Crown. I've been enjoying that one. Could give bad spelling, Sarah, and freak your neighbors out. <laughs> oh, goodness. I love Jason and the Argonauts. And Spinal Tap. Gosh. My fans in here have such great taste. <gasps> oh, Brian, I appreciate it, but too much swearing in the chat. Valhalla Pain chat this year? Yeah, I think that would be possible. I'll have to see if it lines up with the weeks. But if it does, then we'll try. I'll have to see if Aaron can come out with his um, equipment and all of that good stuff. For a new show on Nickelodeon called The Barbarian and the Troll has a skeleton reoccurring villain. Lots of laughs. Watch Amanda the Jedi's Twilight Fifty Shades at all breakdowns. Anyone watch Shadow and Bone? That's another one I saw a previews for, but I have not seen it. So, no. It's too much Netflix stuff. What was the other one I was watching? I watched a little bit of Ozark, and then I got past the first season and thought, this is kind of depressing, and I'm not going to watch this show anymore. <laughs> like, well, not depressing. It was anxiety-inducing. 
because the guys, the, the whole situation is just so stressful. I'm like, I don't need the TV on to get myself stressed out. Like, I, and then I'm I watch. I'm stressed out on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. So instead I watch videos of Griffey, the dancing cockatoo. Or little insightful videos on how octopus, like, do things. Or solve puzzles. Yeah, healthy things. Shadow and Bone has a Kador vibe. Really? Why'd you have to say that? Let's see. Brian, wife and I are just started that one. So far, so good. The army and the main girl gives me strong Kador vibes. What? Fine. I'll watch it. Shadow and Bone. Let me know. I should have read Six of Crows and not Shadow of Bones. Hmm. Miranda, you mentioned Jason and the Argonauts. I DM'd you a work of mine called Harryhausen Inspired. All right. I binged Modoc on Hulu. Great, silly fun. So do you guys Netflix while you do a lot of painting? Because I can listen to audiobooks and paint. And anything that's just an audio sensory thing. I can do things that I've already seen. You can. I know a lot of people have been able to watch even just new stuff and they'll watch it yeah, I can. enough. Which, I don't know how that works. I, I don't like you. I think you have to do one or the other, but. So do you guys watch actual Netflix or movies to do your hobby into? And if so, is it a repeat like what Flo's talking about? Or will you just watch anything? Dark and stormy. I don't know what you guys are talking about. All my TV knowledge is old. It's like my video game knowledge. Let's see, War Budgies. I can Netflix if I've seen it before. I'll put a season of Marco Polo on during a weekend and burn through a ton of models. The TV series Shadow and Bone puts the Shadow and Bone books with the Six of Crows books, and I feel like the Six of Crows books would have been much better. Podcasts and video essays. Oh, yeah. Oh, I love video essays. I agree with that. Let's see, Corbis, I watch new stuff. The painting takes a back seat if it gets good. Okay. You know what? That's a good idea. I just watch stuff I've seen over while painting or building. Well, yeah, Brian, cause you're, you're, are you still staying pretty busy building stuff? Or how, how have things gone and as far as the old business here in town? I listened to the Lord of the Rings audiobooks recently while painting. Yeah. Although some of that detail, because Tolkien gets very detailed in his writing, and I, I wonder if it can, I don't know, it just depends on how you listen to it, I guess. I feel like I might zone out listening to some of this stuff, because it's like, no, I like your story, Tolkien, I feel like it goes a little long. And this is from somebody who enjoyed the heck out of reading Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Let's see, I'll watch movies I've already seen, or a lot of Star Trek, The Next Generation, or DS9. Mm. I listen to Wargaming mood music. <laughs> Have you guys seen the movie Zero Charisma? It's so good. It's so, like, it kind of hurts your heart a little bit, because it has a lot of truth to it, where you're like, kind of know that kind of personality, and you feel bad. But it's a really interesting and well-told story, and yes. The appropriate music for it is about a guy who plays Dungeons and Dragons, or you know, the equivalent in the movie. And yes, I, I love it when they set up their mood music, it's great. Sarah Zaz McElroy video essay? I haven't seen that one. I mostly do down tempo electronic music while painting or drawing. That's too many words or something I need to think about to grasp. I can't get the into the flow state needed for great art. Fair enough. Horror Babble is my painting jam. You're familiar with that one, aren't you? Is that the thing? I have not done any. Oh, no? Though I should. 
I know, it seems 100% up your alley. Well, for me, I'll just watch any YouTube channels instead, including, but not only, Wargamer Girl, Critical Role, D&D Beyond, and Adeptus Ridiculous. Frankenstein was a good audiobook for me. <clears throat> I really enjoyed the Dracula audiobook, too, because it was actually, um, it had multiple voices in it. World War Z audiobook. Oh, yeah, I bet that one's probably pretty solid. Let's see. It might work if it's something I'm so intimately familiar with that I can tune the words out. Yeah, but I almost feel like music would do a better job in that case, J. Alex. Ryan, I got a 3D printer. It consumed my life, then kept airing. I just feel bad that I'm not printing. Well, kept airing? Like, something wrong with the print bed, something wrong with the computer. What kind of printer did you get? I will occasionally put on a fun and engaging War Budgies battle report. Or learn about how to play Warcaster in, what was it, five minutes? Miranda, hi from crazy New York, Long Island area. Hi, Sammy. Zero Charisma, I gotta watch that one too. Yeah, I don't know where you'd exactly find it, but it is, it's a really good movie. Like, I think it's better than Unicorn City or Knights of Bad Astem. Like, all of those have a different take on how they treat gamers, and this, this felt a lot more, I don't know, raw? You'll know what I'm talking about if you actually watch it, because, I mean, the main character you follow is not a nice person. Hence the zero charisma. Update. <gasps> Progress check. Alright. How's he looking here? Oh yes. So what did you what did you do? So I'm starting to work on the chains, getting those. Um woo, come back. There we go. Worked on I've got them part of them washed and then brought back up. His slowing cloth is done and which also does not want to focus. There we go. There you go. You focus on that butt. Okay, nice. And so you got the highlights of his bones and everything coming out a little bit too on his back. Yeah. So he's almost done. Like, Ooh, it's booby. <laughs> I enjoy watching the new Wargamer Girl Space Wolf bat reps. Oh, wait, they're not out yet. Yeah, yeah, I'm Miranda. <laughs> I know. I'm a terrible person. Just understand, it is sitting there on a hard drive, just waiting for the voiceover to be recorded. So that should be like your number one thing on that list there, on your whiteboard. I don't have to talk about my whiteboards. They are very white. There is a Montauk in five minutes up now, slowly working my <laughs> way through their games. Oh, nice. So there you go, War Machine in five minutes. You could even cheat it and do like War Machine and Hordes in five minutes, like a separate videos. Chains are really popping, love it. Well, if a Boros is prepped for priming, <gasps> me. You gotta watch that movie. Yes, it's, it's a good movie. I mean, it is worth it. It's just hard to watch. <sighs> you know, it's not even hard to watch. It's it is fascinating. I feel like it is a far more accurate rep representation of the different personality types that come to gaming than what you see in something like Knights of Badassdom um, or even Unicorn City, which is a little better, where they really caricaturize gamer people. And, you know, it's never really like a flattering character caricaturization. And, um,. Yeah, I don't know. I just liked it a lot better. We'll save it for April Fools next year. Talk for an hour, then play it like 12x speed for the video. Everybody likes your work there, Flo. Yay! Looking good. Got my work cut out getting this uh, this whole business put together. The slaughterhouse has a lot of souls going on with it. There's a lot of climbing hands either on graves or trees in addition to all the goblins and the fire. So much fire. Samuel says, keep on our flow. We need those Space Hulk bat reps, please. 
I went as far as to be in this next one. So it's true. She is my opponent in that. Progress. She's coming. Math rocks are painted. What color did you go? Decided to go with a variety of colored metallics from Army Painter. Okay. Now deciding on what color Gabo's girl hair should be. I like the temperatures on the rise. E yeah. Well, I haven't actually like switched over to my evaporative cooler. On yeah, my but nose. you've got you've got fans. I've got fans. I needed mine on. I do too many workouts. Yeah. And I hate my evaporative cooler. I mean, I do too, but it's not like I have a choice. No. <laughs> so, there's been that little bit of struggle. Like, as much frustration as other people might have that I haven't gotten, like, a battle report out that I've been intending to get out. Like, there's just basic things around my house that I've been needing to do for probably about as long as well. I'm just gone a lot. Everybody likes Miranda. Everybody wants her time. And mm. she tries to help and give her time out properly. Wow. So all of her own stuff ends up falling away. <laughs> Well, hopefully not much longer. Samuel, oh snap, bring him on. <laughs> Todd, I keep my fan on forever. Winter with it on. Really? I used to do that. Yeah? Until I realized how expensive I was being. And I was like, no. Nope. Turning it off. I was just not, yeah, I guess it's, I mean, fans don't well, take up that much. I had, I had a little portable AC. It uh, wasn't even just a fan. Is it the one with the little tubes that you put out on the window? Or was it an actual window unit? It wasn't a window unit. Okay, it was yeah. One you could move. Yeah. But it used a lot of electricity. Yeah, no, they used, I think, two or three times what um, a, a window unit uses. I watched this whole video on it that was sort of trying to put people off them for the most part. Like, you know, if you need them, um, the portable air conditioners are fine if you need them, but if you have any other option, any other no option is going to be better. <laughs> yeah, if you don't have it, then it's still better, right? Progress. War Budgie's bug thing is done with carapace base, glowing wings, and claws are started. Carapace texture is for tomorrow. How are you going to texture it? Are you going to do an actual bug shell, like with that green and black kind of metallic coloring? or? So what you're saying is that a spiel caricature of caricatures in the life of Chronicles of a Wargamer, hint hint. Life of a Wargamer is so absurd. <laughs> I don't think it makes fun of gamers. I didn't know that the creator of Berserk, Kentaro Murara, passed away last month. Are you familiar with that? Well, I, I know Berserk, but I've not seen it. Oh. So. Uh, that's unfortunate. Was he older, or was this like an unexpected surprise thing? Uh, it's a dark brown bone base, and I've added pale lines to give it a texture. Oh. Okay, nice. I'm still trying to find that down Boros. Wolf. Arg. So mad. How many awesome 3D prints. Ah, oh, so good. I'm so excited for ours. Yeah. You guys are getting another one, aren't you? Another printer? Mm-hmm. DJ wants to. <laughs> Is it going to happen? I would like to get the bed first. Um, Maybe get my eyes fixed, you know? Fair enough. I understand. So where is this? Why? Everything about Facebook is just garbage. Mm. Yeah, it's not even, I don't know. Now Zero just got a text saying that a call is coming in five. Say goodbye after all. Bye. Bye. Bye, Jay Alex. Bye, bye, bye. Good to have you. Late 50s and you died of heart failure. Ugh. That sucks. 
You never know when you're going to go, and your heart uh, is not the thing you want to surprise you. Uh, yep, the new destroyer's monster. Hmm. I'm trying to think if there's really anything else we need to go over. I know you're. How close are you to finishing this? Well, once I finish these chains, then I just have a few bandages and his nails. And his nails? His, his toenails. <laughs> yes. Yes. She's like, there's no one downstairs to let me outside. <laughs> I'm sure that's what she wants. Too bad. There you go. You can sit on my lap for a little bit. The new destroyer's monster. That sounds cool. Poof, crank to 11. <laughs> Bye, J. Alex. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I feel like we're kind of winding down for the evening. Fun fact, uh, Flo is still using the same wet palette from a couple of weeks ago with the same moisture in it, right? I added just a tiny bit more. You did? Oh. Yeah. Do you use distilled water for that or just water water? Um, mm, depends. Usually we boil it first. Ah. Uh. But I was lazy today, so. Just water, water. I have distilled water, because you're supposed to use it in your iron and all that stuff. Mm -mm. I think I know why my cat wanted me to pet her. She's like, help me get all of this fur off me. Because she is shedding like a night, like a crazy cat. All right, let's see. Tomorrow, no paint. Instead, I will be shoulder deep in several aquariums. Time for weekly maintenance. Oh. See? Miranda will be busy you too. You're so good about your maintenance. Blech. Yeah, I'll be I'll be on set tomorrow, so I'm excited about that. I will be at dance tomorrow. Ah. Oh. Do you work as well or? Um Well, I got a story for that. But. Okay. No paint and stuff. Yes. So it is what it is. So Gonna let Flo kind of finish up her little miniature, but the um, Black Anchor Heavy Industries Slaughterhouse model I thought was definitely a fun thing to get to show you guys. And what did we say, 13 pieces? Yes. So that will be fun to get assembled. I'm gonna probably do an actual unveiling video on that because I really need to make a video again. And this would be a brilliant piece to make a video over, I think. Nice and easy. Chat a little bit about it. Yeah, I even printed off its rules and I didn't even talk about this. So, way to go, man. I know. Dropping the ball. Well, they made a big deal about the whole undergrowth thing, which is an animus that apparently only Megalith had. So, pretty extra special and um, enemy models lose lose defense in it, which is excellent, especially since it only affects enemy models, which I believe I've commented on before. The cat is very happy. I love my wet palette, says Samuel. Hey, Robert. Austin, I can't hold anything with my left hand until these stitches come out, so no paint for me. Oof. Well, I hope you recover quickly, Austin. Uh, Adept is ridiculous. Speaking about the slaughterhouse, I'll try to post what I have about the complicated ginormous model suit. <laughs> okay. Slaughterhouse looks very cool. It does look super cool. I can't wait to see. Ah, no, it'll be awesome. The nice thing about giving a model to flow is it actually comes back painted in like a pretty quick period of time. I'll say, I might have it in like a week. Yeah, it'll be awesome. So. So, assuming you get it primed and stuff in a relatively fast fashion, maybe by next week we'll have it. You hear all this judging happening? The, the next paint night, I mean. So it's two weeks. Right. No week it was, it was becoming very difficult for me. So. Okay. What the what? Yes. You ready for a final progress check? Uh, sure. Give me two seconds. Oh my gosh. 
No time. I mean, no time. Hey, we're gonna remember what happened to the scary face for the hags wearing your background. Off with the head. Was there a mask there? I don't remember. Stuff moves around and disappears now. Alright. Uh, progress check, you one. <laughs> Is it judging if she's not wrong? Yes! Anyway. Um, yes! Alright, final progress check. I think we're gonna cut it here a little bit early. Mostly because I felt like we're kind of petering out, or I am, anyway. Miranda and is petering out. she has pretty much got it perfect, as it's always. It's not done. Basically perfect. It's not done. It's not done. I mean, look, it's got skin and chains, a little loincloth. It's walking on some gray gravel that needs to be painted purple. Man, I do like that dynamic, though. The different um, pallor of the skin the face. Yeah, her fa favorite's the face. Yeah, my favorite's definitely the face. So, he's super scary Hello. and I look forward to putting him out on the table with the slaughterhouse and I still only have the heretic as my main uh, um, warlock that I use. So I should probably make the investment in a warlock. That might be the dreamer. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Making a request. No, don't quit now. She's not she's not gonna quit. She's gonna finish it. I just I'm gonna quit and get some water. You guys are awesome together. Aw, thank y'all. <sighs> See, everyone thinks we're awesome together. No, I think we're awesome together. You get to paint my stuff. I get to talk about my stuff. It's <laughs> win win. <laughs> Loincloth, yes. All right, well, thank you, guys. You all have a wonderful evening. I'll be back in two weeks, which is going to put me at the 16th, as I understand. So, yeah. We'll just we'll just catch you later, guys. You have a great night, and don't, don't stop let stress working. It. Yeah, well, don't stop hobbying, but don't overwhelm yourself with it either.